JBN will keep you informed. And Michelle Jones and in the news, dad shot dead, three-year-old wounded in bamboo gun attack. Bamboo in sent and is no tense. Following a gun attack that left a father dead and his three-year-old daughter wounded on Saturday night. The deceased has been identified as 40-year-old Orlando Atkinson, otherwise called Junior, a contractor from Lilyfield District in Bambo. It's supported that about 8.30 Saturday night, Atkinson, his girlfriend and their daughter were en route to their home when they stopped at a bar to purchase items. While his girlfriend went inside the bar, Atkinson waited in the vehicle with the child. His girlfriend later reported hearing explosions. She is said to return to the car to find Atkins and their daughter with wounds. Two men reportedly observed running toward a white Toyota Axo motor car, which then sped away. The cops were called to the scene, and on the arrival, Atkins was seen with gunshot wounds to the upper body, and his daughter received a wound to the foot. They were transported to hospital, where Atkins was pronounced dead, and his child was treated and released. There was also concern about what life will be for the injured infant. These people have no heart. Imagine, even if they want to kill a man and them see the child, they should just walk away. The child say her father did right in front of her. She will never be the same. And to think that she also got shot, that is heartless, said a resident of the area who only identified herself as Kimon. Once upon a time, criminals had some sort of a moral compass. Them used to leave children alone. No, no one is off limits. The future of Jamaica doesn't look good. It is scary and sad. The leaders must do something about this, said a distraught Kimon. Three killed in separate incidents in St. James on Sunday. Three murders were committed in the parish of St. James within 12 hours on Sunday. The bloodletting started at 1.30 p.m. with the killing of a man on Orange Street in downtown Montego Bay. The man, who remains unidentified, was shot by unknown assailants. By late afternoon, another man was shot and killed in Irwin, just outside the town centre. And about 5.30 p.m., gunmen struck at Bickerseth near Cambridge, killing another man. The three deaths followed the murders of two brothers in Green Pond on Friday night. St. James has been under a state of emergency since November 8. Anchovy High School mourns student killed by gunmen. Students and staff at Anchovy High School in St. James have been plunged into mourning after a second four male student was shot and killed on Friday in his community. On Monday, students wept openly at the news that their schoolmate, Rondino James, was no longer with them. Led by the Student Services Department of the school, a team of grief counselors from several other schools within the area offered counseling to students and teachers on the Fidel Castro campus of the school in Montpelier. According to Laverne Stewart, principal of the 51-year-old educational institution, the entire school is in mourning. However, she said support has come in from external guidance counselors, members of the Parent Teachers Association, and the Ministry of Education. As a result of the emotional impact on the institution from Rondino's death, Stuart says end of year examinations for second form students have been suspended to allow sufficient time for mourning. We most definitely could not have them sit in an exam at this time based on the emotions that they are facing and dealing with, Stuart said. The exams will be administered at a later date. The police say about 6.28 p.m. on Friday, 14-year-old Rondino of Mar Road in Montpelier was playing a game of football and took a break to shelter at a bar from a sudden downpour of rain when a vehicle drove up and two men alighted. The men entered the bar and opened gun from the occupants, hitting James in the upper body. James was pronounced dead at hospital. A 17-year-old female was also shot and injured in the attack. Electrician on drug charges demanded an electrician charge in connection with the siege of cocaine valued at $10.2 million was remanded when he appeared in the St. Catherine Parish Court on Monday. Andrew Walcott, 36, of Clarkstown, Manchester, is charged with possession of cocaine, dealing in cocaine, trafficking cocaine, and possession of criminal property. When Walcott appeared before senior Parish Court judge Yvette Wentworth Miller, the matter was postponed until Wednesday. It is alleged that about 2.30 p.m. on November 18, detectives from the Narcotics and the St. Catherine South Divisions were on operation in Old Arbor when they intercepted a Nissan motor car driven by Walcott during a search of the vehicle, two rectangular parcels containing cocaine weighing about 2 kilograms were discovered. The detectives also reportedly discovered $10,000 inside the vehicle. The car, drugs and cash were seized and Walcott was arrested. St. Andrew Central Division lists for wanted men. Detectives assigned to the St. Andrew Central Division have listed four men as wanted 
for several crimes committed across the parish. They are Nicholas Williams, otherwise called Pooh Bear, a 20-year-old of University Crescent, Kingston, who is wanted for a shooting with intent. Roshane Douglas, otherwise called Rush, of Gordon Hill District in St. Andrew, who is wanted for murder. Ashawani McKenzie, otherwise called Menx, a 27-year-old of Anderson Road, Kingston, who is wanted for murder. And Calvin Simon, otherwise called CJ, a 19-year-old of Gordon Hill District in St. Andrew, who is wanted for murder. The men are urged to turn themselves in to the Halfway Tree Police immediately. The police are also reminding members of the public that it is a criminal offence to harbour fugitive. Investigators are encouraging persons to continue sharing information to aid in the investigations by calling the Halfway Tree Police at 876-926-8184, Crime Support 311, the NIB tip line at 811, the Police 119 numbers or the nearest police station. Cops urge business owners to beef up security for Christmas. On the heels of Sunday's During Daylight robbery at the KFC restaurant King Street branch in downtown Kingston, Business owners have been warned to review their security arrangements, especially over the Christmas season, to ensure the safety of their businesses and customers. No one is hurt by the armed hoodlums, but the thieves made off with valuables and a little over $100,000. In the aftermath of the robbery, head of the Kingston Central Police Division, Superintendent Burstwood Williams said, We asked business establishments, especially where they handle large amounts of cash, to look at their security arrangements and to make sure especially in this festive season, that customers can feel comfortable coming in. He said that while the police will be deployed on the streets in their numbers and will be making checks at different businesses during their deployment, it will be challenging to visit every business. We can't be everywhere every time. There is some obligation on private businesses to look at their own security arrangements, he stressed. According to Williams, sometime after 11, four men entered the facility armed with two handguns and wearing regular COVID-19 masks, held up and robbed the employees of cash, jewelry, and electronics. They also took money from the till, amounting to just over $100,000, and made their escape in the business district, he said. Up to last evening, Williams said there were no leads and appealed to persons who might know the perpetrators are to assist the police with information. He added, however, that the investigators will be considering CCTV footage through Jamaica Eye to see if it can be of help. In the meantime, he said the police have already increased their deployment for the busy Christmas season and starting today will further boost the numbers with outside assistance from other sections of the force. From early last week Thursday, the police increased its deployment in the commercial district significantly, the commander stated. He noted, however, that the deployment on a Sunday would not have been heavy as the majority of the businesses in the commercial district are usually closed on that day. Williamsfield Water Supply Restored After Eight Year Struggle in a significant development for the Williamsfield District in the northeastern section of St. Catherine, approximately 200 residents are now enjoying the benefits of an upgraded minor water supply courtesy of the St. Catherine Municipal Corporation. The project, spearheaded by Councilor Roger Curlow of the Mount Industry Division, was aimed at addressing the prolonged water shortage caused by the theft of 20 lengths of 2-inch galvanized pipes. The municipal corporation's pumping facility, which sources water from local springs, had been out of service for an extended period due to the theft of the pipes. Curlew, who invested more than $500,000 for misallocation in the project, explained that the installation of PVC pipes was crucial to providing piped water to residents who had endured eight years of water scarcity. This marks the first phase of a larger initiative with plans to ensure over 800 residents receive a consistent water supply in their homes, Curlew said. To safeguard the newly implemented system, Curlew outlined collaborative efforts with the police, emphasizing the importance of neighborhood watch programs and partnerships with citizens' associations and community development committees to prevent theft of the newly installed PVC pipes. Addressing the financial challenges faced by the municipal corporation in sustaining such water systems, Curlew acknowledged the need to reassess the minimum flat rate currently paid by residents. He stressed that there was an expense associated with supplying treated piped water and proposed community engagement through meetings to raise awareness about the associated cost to get them to partner with the municipal corporation. Looking ahead, Curlew revealed ongoing discussions about transitioning to renewable energy sources to reduce the reliance on Jamaica Public Service for power supply to the water pumps. Muriel Brown, acting president 
of the Williamsfield Citizens Association expressly for the residents who have been grappling with water shortages since 2015. It has been a difficult journey for the residents who have to carry water on their heads all this time, so we are happy for the water. Now we can take showers and wash our clothes, Brown said. She credited citizens' advocacy, including a petition with more than 100 signees, for bringing attention to the issue and securing Curlew's commitment to delivering running water before the Christmas holiday. JBN will keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.